This is quite an old CRT and in fact it uh, dates back from the Second World War uh, from early radar. But it's basically an oscilloscope uh, cathode ray. Many after the war were used as surplus in uh, to homemade oscilloscopes and the likes. If we switch the power on it, you can see we have a, a small spot on the screen and if I switch on the uh, flexion again we have the beam. The interesting point for setting these up is a little bit more involved uh, because we have to connect the various anodes and such like up to supplies or that you can have problems. So this is basically the um, electron gun from this style of CRT uh, and you can see in here we have the cathode in this in here with the first grid connection around it then there's a an anode plate here now this plate is common to all the anode connections which was up by this rail so this is also part of the anode this last one here and also this plate between the x and y uh, deflection plates so this point and this point and uh, this point all form the final anode. There's also a connection here which connects the anode voltage to the outer coating. So internally there's this aquadag which is a graphite coating and that's also connected to the anode potential. This centre one is separate for focus. If the uh, X or Y plates are left or any of these are left floating, they charge up and deflect the beam so the beam may not appear on the screen, which is one of the frustrating things when you're trying to connect up an oscilloscope tube if you don't really know what all the pins are, uh, because you sometimes it will be operating but you won't get a beam out of it because it's deflected into the, the casing or something somewhere. Uh, now in order for these plates to work I've had to connect them to the anode potential. This wire here is connecting the the X plate to the anode potential. I can do that because I'm using an isolating transformer. If I disconnect that wire you can see we're now losing focus because a charge is developing on the plates uh, that isn't referenced to the anode here. Uh, so while we've still got the, the voltage uh, fluctuating on our plates, there's a, a, a charge building up on them as well. So this has to be also referenced to the anode to keep the focus correct. And that also goes for the two plates I'm not using just now, the, the X plates. It's worth uh, looking at one of these. This is an educational uh, Maltese Cross uh, CRT. Um, which can demonstrate the, this charging problem. So we have a metal cross in the middle of the the tube on our fluorescent screen at this end and our electron gun here. Okay, we've got the Maltese cross uh, CRT connected up and the heater is on and you need to apply a voltage onto the anode here which is about 2.5 kV. Uh, notice the Maltese cross is distorted because there's a charge on the Maltese cross by the electrons hitting it. This charge is building up and distorting the image. If I connect the uh, Maltese cross to the anode, we get an exact image reproduced. If I disconnect, then again it charges when it's floating and distorts the image. And this is why the electron beam and uh, CRT with deflection plates can be difficult to find because the plates can be charged up. Okay, we've got this CRT uh, connected up just now. This one's an interesting one out of my collection. It's quite a large uh, face plate on this. Um, it's got to be at least I don't know, five inches, six inches. There's a, a voltage uh, potential gradient developed by this arrangement of resistors here. The highest voltage is on this internal coating here which is 4 kV and the anodes on the gun run about 2 kV off the potential divider. Uh, if I apply the 4 kV, see so you've got a nice spot on the screen and I can adjust the brightness quite nicely with this potential and it gives a good bright spot, there's a very good output from this uh, cathode and I've also got a focus which has got a good range of 
focusability on that spot as well. I've also added two potentiometers on the XY plates so this time I also can adjust the X and Y position. Obviously the tube's at a funny angle but there's X and Y can be adjusted to static position using these potentiometers. So as a as a setup for just initially running the CRT, that's what's required.